San Francisco's historic anchor brewing has now shut down, citing the business is very sluggish. Now, this isn't the first iconic store in San Francisco closing, but just a few weeks ago, we got a 70-year cafe. It's a very iconic cafe. They closed down. And when asked the cafe owners about why would you shut down after 70 years in the city, they said that the foot traffic from businesses is very, very low. Also, that tourism was basically non-existent. Now, just a couple days ago, I also made a video about how this 100-year-old hat store has also closed down, citing the same thing, very high crimes, there's robberies everywhere for small business owners. And these are one of the few stores that makes it on the headlines. A lot of the other smaller mom and pop stores souvenir stores, stores that cater towards tourism, and also just small coffee shops and small eats. Those have shut down quietly, and the media hasn't reported about them. But if you really look at the streets of San Francisco, the majority of the streets on Market Street is basically empty. There's almost like a feeling of more empty stores than open stores. Streets are pretty empty. There's not a lot of office workers. They say that the vacancies are 30%, but it's more like 50 to 60% because a lot of the leases haven't ended yet. Now, what Anchor Brewery Brewing is saying that is it's very sad to shut down. And they pretty much said that, you know, cities, politics are pretty bad. And this eventually causes, you know, a lot of sluggish business. And like I said before, the city doesn't care at all about if they close. The city just sees, I don't even know how the city is thinking. The city just doesn't care in general. I mean, there's homelessness everywhere. There's crime everywhere. And there's pretty much just urine and feces on the streets. And of course, that is not a good selling point for tourists who are trying to go to the city for a good vacation. I mean, if you look at companies, CEOs, rich people who live in San Francisco, they are done with it. They see that the Tenderland District has always been an open-air drug market for several decades now. Nothing has ever been changed about California. And it really amazes people that, you know, how can they just not change? I mean, isn't this a first world city and you still have open air drug markets? Isn't this a tech capital of North America and you still have open air drug markets, crime, homelessness everywhere? I don't even know what the city is thinking at this point, okay? I mean, at least San Diego is like, let me ban homeless encampments but at the same time, we're gonna help a lot of the homeless individuals on the streets. San Diego is still pretty bad. It's still pretty disgusting, but at least they're doing something to help. But as these businesses slowly close, close down, as the iconic ones leave, it's slowly becoming a ghost town, right? I mean, check out this. There's a whole entire section of closures of big retail stores in San Francisco. And you got big name brands. We're not talking about smaller family stores. We're talking about your Whole Foods, Old Navy, and Nordstrom. That's just three out of the 20 massive retailers that have left. By the way, we also recently saw AT&T's flagship store leaving as well. The 70-store downtown Westfield Mall usually has virtually zero vacancies, experienced 50% vacancies, and Westfield Mall has said that they will stop making payments on a $558 million loan. They're just pretty much giving the shopping center to whoever wants it, leaving it to its fate. And pretty much all the stores in there are gonna be slowly closing as well. I mean, we're not talking about some mall in the very, like the weird side of San Francisco or the bad side of San Francisco or like a really remote place. I mean, Westfield Mall is in a great spot of San Francisco. It's downtown, okay, and they're closing. Usually these places, people literally bid on the rents to get it. Now they're leaving. Retail exodus trend is focused mostly because of crime and homelessness in the situation. And there's just so much more to this, right? You know, tech workers are leaving. I think people are not putting up with the crap of San Francisco. Now, if this is pre-pandemic and this thing was going on, I think a lot of people would actually put up with it. But now people do not want to put up with it. People are sick and tired of it just being a massive cesspit. The Tenderloin District is slowly spreading out. We're seeing almost 10,000 homeless people in the city, and the city's not even that big in size. It's like a little peninsula. And 800,000 people in the city, probably only 600,000 people left. The amount of emptiness in the downtown streets is very, very scary. Housing prices has also dropped dramatically. Housing prices in the entire Bay Area is one of the fastest declining in the whole world, not just the U.S., and especially San Francisco. 
oh, by the way, are you hoping that foreign buyers would come in and save San Francisco? No way. Even Chinese buyers are avoiding this town. Chinese tourism, they're everywhere. But the one place they really avoid in all the world is like San Francisco. If you go to one of the Chinese blogs, they all say the same thing. It's probably one of the filthiest places I've ever been in, considering this is the Bay Area. They all thought it's going to be very high tech and clean, but it's actually very low tech and very dirty, and there's no more companies left. And that's a shame, okay? We really need to get San Francisco on track because companies are leaving in droves, and it eventually gets to a certain point where enough companies leave, where the whole entire city just collapses. And the economy just collapses in the city. San Francisco haven't gotten to that point just yet. We still have some companies still stationed here. But give it some time. Okay, if the city really doesn't care and doesn't make some radical, drastic changes, it's going to be the next Detroit, and that's what's going to happen. Now, like I said before, you know the offices are getting emptier, and emptier every single day, and so many of these companies are leaving. And this is simply because of online working, right? You have a lot of CEOs, rich guys. They don't want to really live in a place like San Francisco. Like they have nice cars and nice condos, and they don't they don't want those nice cars to be broken into all the time. They're moving to other places like Las Vegas, Austin, Miami. These are all places where previously were not massive tech scenes, but now recently these are massive tech scenes. And like I said before, San Francisco closed the second quarter of 2023 with a record overall vacancy rate of 31.6%. The city is struggling to rebound from the pandemic, and more and more cities are accepting the San Francisco guys. San Francisco engineers are very talented. San Francisco companies are sought after. And now these companies are going for the Midwest. They're going for smaller cities. Some are going for Austin, Las Vegas. And a lot of cities are even offering incentives for the San Francisco tech companies to move out and go to their city and bring the workers with them. We're also seeing the rise of online digital work, which is putting pressure on San Francisco. Nobody is willing to put up with this crap. We pay crazy high taxes for a city where nothing is being cared about. And I don't blame these guys. Tourism is basically dead, guys. Airbnb bookings decline in San Francisco and they're declining really fast. Initially, pre-pandemic, even like back in 2020, 2021, you know, a lot of Airbnb guys said out of 30 nights, they rented out 27 to 28 nights. But now out of every 30 nights, sometimes not a single night gets listed or rent it out. And some people get lucky, they say like five to 10 nights are rented out, but overall Airbnb booking declines are a serious factor in San Francisco. And like I said before, there's much less foot traffic than before. I wonder why, okay? The whole city is not a vacation spot. When you say you're going to San Francisco for vacation, the first thing people think is, why the hell did you ever go there? But if you say you're going to Miami, they're like, oh, that's a pretty cool place. If you go to the Panama City, they're like, oh, that's a great place. If you tell them you're going to vacation in New York City or Los Angeles, they're like, oh, okay, not bad, not bad. If you tell them Chicago, San Diego, they understand as well. These are all pretty great cities with vibrant nightlife. But the moment you say San Francisco vacation, everyone just recoils in disgust because this city has not been fixed at all. I mean, here's what I want to think about San Francisco. They don't have to be perfect, okay? Just fix 50% of the problems, you know, scale back 50% of the crime. You know, and don't even change the tendril industry at this point. Just, just pretty much, I don't even know. Like, I'm just shocked about how a city could be managed to this point. I mean, I've been to several cities around the world. You know, I've been to the UAE. I've been to Qatar. I've been to even China. I've been to Japan, I've been to Singapore, Australia. And none of these cities have open-air drug markets and just homeless people everywhere. Only San Francisco. And it just amazes me. Okay, It really, really amazes me. And I really hope they change because this is one of my favorite cities before the pandemic. And now it's just terrible. I hope they change. See you guys later.